Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks, Suman, for a kind introduction. Um, today, I'm going to present the high rates of hepatitis C co-infection and advanced chronic hepatitis among HIV cohorts in MSF programs in Myanmar. Um, firstly, I would like to start with some epidemiological background. Globally, 130 to 150 million people suffer from chronic hepatitis C disease. In Myanmar, um, Department of Medical Research uh, and the Ministry of Health conducted a national hepatitis survey in 2015. According to that survey, hepatitis C seroprevalence in general population is 2.65, but it's very high in people with injection drug users, it's 47%. For people living with HIV, it's 20%. Uh, as we have 14 states in Myanmar, there are some disparities between different states. Some, some states have high, very high prevalence. Some states have low prevalence according to the context backgrounds. But in Myanmar, most of the people are living, living are unaware of the infection, and so the available prevalence data probably most uh, not reflect the whole population. Currently, National Hepatitis program has developed a guideline for diagnosis and treatment of hepatitis C, and they are planning to start the treatment very soon. So what MSF is doing in Myanmar? MSF OCS started working in Myanmar since 1992. Um, they started HIV program in 2002 in three states, Yangon, Shan, and Kachim, um, with outpatient clinics um, not linked with MOH service. In, from 2013, MSF started um, screening for hepatitis B and hepatitis C in newly diagnosed HIV patients and also st slowly started screening the whole existing cohort, all the patients. Currently, we have uh, 32,000 patients in Yangon, Shan, and Kachem. Objectives. The objective of the presentation is to describe the prevalence of chronic Hep C infection among our cohort and to describe the prevalence genotype among Yangon cohort and also fibrosis staging among Yangon cohort. We analyze data from two databases. The one is Fucha database, which is for um, follow-up and treatment of HIV patients, and also HEPAMU database, which is only for hepatitis patients. We got the data of seroprevalence data from Fucha database, which we, are, we have started screening for all the HIV patients. And for further investigations of hepatitis C treatment, we got the data from HEPAMU database. So, as I've already mentioned, we, we have started screening for all the, our patients since 2013. If using rapid diagnostic tests, if the screening test is positive, we, we should proceed to confirmatory testing using RNA viral load. And if the patient is confirmed as chronic HCV, we have to proceed to genotyping and fibrosis staging, and then we, we should start treatment and treatment monitoring using viral load. But in Shan and Kachin, we can only do screening at the moment. We have not proceeded to other confirmatory tests and investigations for treatment. But in Yangon project, we are doing the whole spectrum of investigations after treatment. So what do we found during screening? The results are somewhat interesting. In Yangon, the seroprevalence is only 7% among our HIV cohort. But in Shan and Kachin, it's alarmingly high. In Shan, it's 29%. In Kachin, it's 38%. The high prevalence of hepatitis C in Shan and Kachin is most probably due to the high number of injection drug users in that region. And we also found out that we have some patients who are co-infected with hepatitis B a small number of patients, these patients have triple burden of disease, HIV, hepatitis C, and hepatitis B. So, relationship with people with injection drug use. In Yangon, 11% of our hepatitis C seropositive patients are, have history of injection drug use. But in Shan and Kachin, it's much higher. In Shan, it's 68%. In Kachin, it's 40%. So, this clearly shows that um, the high prevalence in Shan and Kachin is 
related to injection, high number of injection drug use in these regions. So as I've already mentioned, we are proceeding other investigations for treatment in Yangon project. For fibrosis staging, we are using two methods. One is fibroscan, um, which is a simple non-invasive method using a fibroscan machine um, that measures the stiffness of liver. The results come out with kilopascals. If the result is more than 9.4 kilopascal, we say it's advanced cirrhosis. F3, F4, if less than 9.4 less than 9 9 is early cirrhosis, F1 and F2. Interestingly, half of our patients are having advanced cirrhosis who need urgent treatment. And another method is APRI scoring, AST platelet ratio index, which use two blood investigation, AST, a liver enzyme, and platelet count. And we calculate using a formula and we got an index value. If the index value is more than 1.5, it's advanced cirrhosis. If less than 1.5, it's early cirrhosis. But we can see that there are some discordance between fibroscan and APRI results. Um, that might be probably due to the difference in sensitivity and specificity of fibroscan and APRI scoring. But since the fibroscan has higher sensitivity and specificity, we are relying mostly on fibroscan values. Regarding genotyping, um, in Yangon project, half of our patients are found out to be genotype three, which is assumed as most aggressive type. But in terms of fibrosis staging, all the genotypes have the same level of fibrosis, not very much difference. So we have very high he AC hepatitis C zero prevalence in Shan and Kachin that most probably is connected to the high prevalence of injection drug use. And the most common genotype among our cohort is genotype three, which is assumed as most aggressive type. And half of our patients in Yangon cohort has advanced liver disease, F3 and F4, who need urgent treatment. And since the prevalence in Chan and Kachin state are very high, we are estimating more patient who need urgent treatment, advanced liver disease in these areas. Limitations. Um, this is not a limitation per se, but we still need to complete the serology test, screening test for our whole cohort. We, we have covered almost over 70% at the moment. And the other point is there are further investigations like confirmatory testing, genotyping, fibrosis staging, for chronic HCV disease are done only in Yangon project, not in Chan and Kachin. And the cost of investigations are still very high, and the treatment availability is still very much limited. The way forward is, as I've already mentioned, we are planning to complete the serology testing, screening testing for the whole cohort. We are hoping we can finish in early 2018. And to scale up further testing for chronic HCV disease, not only in Yangon project, but also in to start soon in Shannon, Kachin. And currently, we have planned to treat 200 patients in Yangon. It's a small number, but currently we have started treatments for our patient. So from our part, national program needs to scale up the diagnosis and chronic ACV and also treatment. They have developed guidelines. They have planned to start a treatment, but this, there still is some urgent needs, other requirements. And also simple, reliable, affordable diagnostic tools still need to be developed. Still, um, the diagnostic test, the treatment, availability, all, everything is still much complicated and not simple yet. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much uh, for sharing this information. And as you can see, uh, IV drug use and its uh, relation to as being a very high risk factor for hep C in these HIV cohorts. And uh, it's very encouraging to know that uh, the treatments are also being uh, initiated by the government. That will be, be an interesting thing to understand better. 
And I would like to ask uh, the audience if you have any questions to, from this presentation or any others. Yes, please. Thank you. I am Dr. Dhyan. Uh, my query is that the people who are HIV positive have hepatitis C. Is there da any data about uh, prevalence of hepatitis B in that group? Because the risk factors are very similar. Um, yes, since we have started screening, also Thank screening you. hepatitis B in our cohort since 2013, we, have, we also have data, but we haven't analyzed systematically yet. We have data. Any questions? Yes, please. Yeah, uh, my name is Yogesh. So uh, we also have, like in our clinic, we have some patients from Myanmar. We have noticed genotype 3 and 6. Uh, I'm just curious, uh, have you any, because even it's a Manipur is a triangle, golden triangle for the IVD use. Uh, so you have any differences among different clinics, the genotypes? So because you mentioned 25% of 6, and uh, more on three. So have you have any identified difference among them? And another question is, among our clinic patients, most of them don't know how they receive the uh, infected with the hep C. So not with the, they are not IVD use, but they don't know how infected. So you have any, because you are staying more on the Myanmar, so is there any prevalence more than IVD use mode of? Um, yes. Um, the, the first question is, um, is there any genotype difference between clinics? In the cohorts. In the cohorts. Um, actually, we have started genotyping only in Yangon Project. So we have two clinics in Yangon Project, and we see no difference. And the, the other point is, in Yangon Project, the patient from, the, the patients are not only from Yangon, but also from outside Yangon, um, the lower part of Myanmar. So uh, I would like to say that there, there's no difference in genotyping. Okay. Oh, yeah. So basically, you know, there, is, there are other risk factors for acquiring hep C infection. And one of the most common, which we are sometimes very ignorant about, is unsafe injection practices. And that's, uh, you know, if you look at the, you know, the information, it's about 80% in India uh, have said to have unsafe injection practices. So yes, please. I am Dr. P. K. Bansal from District Hospital, Meerut. With the collaboration of MSF, we started HEP-C uh, prevalence and clinic and diagnosis in our setup. And most probably, we will be coming with the data very soon. Till date, I have a data till 19th May of, we started working from 25th of January this year. And by 19th of May, uh, May of this year, we have more than 2,200 consultations, out of which almost uh, eight, 750 patients, new patients, and more than 300 is already on treatment. We are providing all diagnosis, genotype, confirmatory test, rapid test, and free treatment, and we are following up also. And all the cases, what he asked about the hepatitis B also, certainly there are certain cases which are hepatitis B positive also, and almost less than 1% HIV positive also. We are doing simultaneously those who are negative hepatitis B, we are doing hepatitis B immunization also in those cases. Thank you for this uh, information. I think uh, now um, we move on uh, because of the limited time, and I, I will invite you to discuss further with him if you have any further.